Safety is of utmost importance in cases of emergencies, like health crisis. But this should not impede learning. Students should be allowed to continue learning in the safety of their homes. Vibal brings you the Smart Homeschool Kit. The Smart Homeschool Kit offers complete tools for a homeschool setup while encouraging collaboration between teachers and parents. This kit contains the following. First, Smart Wizard. These workbooks provide age-appropriate supplementary activity sheets to challenge learners' understanding of the lessons and help them put their learnings into practice. A teacher's guide that serves as a manual for monitoring the learning progress of students at home is also available in the kit. This kit also contains a parent's guide to assist parents in guiding their children while learning at home. Daily lessons are made available in Smart Class. Aside from lessons, these books feature performance tasks aligned with DEPED's K-12 curriculum, good for an entire school year. And to monitor students' learning progression at home, Smart Homeschool Kit also features vSmart HMS, an online monitoring system designed for homeschool learning with features including assignment of lessons and tasks to students, and tracking of learners' progress through analytics. Get the Smart Homeschool Kit today. Email marketing at vibalgroup.com for more details. Good day, Kabibal, and welcome to our Facebook Live Learning Session. For the discussion today, our topic will be um, Strengthening Arithmetic Ar Operations Geared Toward Literacy in Mathematics. Before we begin, kindly take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.bibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions in the comment box allotted and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kabibal. And now to proceed with our webinar this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. Mr. King Tabahonda is a graduate of Philippine Normal University, Manila, Batch 2012 with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, major in Mathematics. He earned units in Master of Arts in Education, Measurements and Evaluation in the same university. He is currently participating as a cultural exchange teacher assigned in Duval County Public Schools in Jacksonville, Florida, USA, teaching intensive mathematics in middle school for grades 6 to 8. He is also a nominee for Teacher of the Year for 2020-2021. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. King A. Tabohan.
Okay. Muli po magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Um, nagkaroon lamang po ng konting difficulty sa pag-ayos nitong um, PowerPoint presentation. Pero ngayon po ay maayos na po at maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pasensya at pag pag-stay po sa video na ito sa webinar. Magandang umaga po lahat sa ating dyan sa Pilipinas at magandang gabi naman po dito sa Amerika. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well in the Philippines right now and hopefully um, this pandemic will end very soon. So let me introduce the topic for today's webinar. The topic is about strengthening arithmetic operations geared towards literacy and mathematics. And again, my name is King Tabahonda and I'm teaching I'm currently on my second year of teaching here in the United States of America, teaching middle school, or the subject is intensive math here in Jacksonville, Florida. So first would be this question in mind. I'd like you to, to formulate an answer and think about the question, having calculators on our smartphones, alam naman natin lahat na kahit mga sudyante natin or yung mga bata, I make kanya kanya ng mga smartphones nowadays. So the question is: Is arithmetic still important in terms of having this technology that we have right now? Kailangan pa ba natin alamin or bigyang pansin ng arithmetic in terms of mathematics? Kung mayroon naman na tayo ng calculator sa ating mga kanya kanya ng mga cellular phones, um, I think you have the same answer as as my answer right now, which is yes, it's really important that arithmetic is really a good foundation for us to say that we are literate in math. Pero ano bang purpose ng calculator? Uh, I, I don't want to, to debunk the idea na hindi mahalaga ang calculator. Yes, it is important. But again, the, the question is, is arithmetic still important? Going back to the idea of calculator, alam natin na kapag nag-compute tayo gamit ng calculator, mas napapabilis nito yung pagbigay sa atin ng tamang sagot. Ngunit ang tanong natin doon, kung tama ba ang na-input natin sa calculator? That's another question that we have to answer if we're using the calculator as mean of our computation or calculation. On, on the other hand, kung magkaroon man ng pagkakamali sa pag-input ng mga uh, values sa calculator, Importante pa din na meron tayong sapat na kaalaman in terms of arithmetic in mathematics. What do you mean by arithmetic? I hope you know the idea that arithmetic pertains to the four basic operations in math. Alam natin kung paano gumamit ng, tama, gumamit ng tamang uh, process ng pag-add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Pero gamit ng calculator, kaya naman niyang gawin ng calculator, sir. So bakit kailangan pa nating aralin yung arithmetic? Gaya nga ng sinabi ko kanina, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon ay tama yung nai-input natin sa calculator. So maaaring lumalabas na sobra yung nagiging result, pero wag nating isisisi sa calculator dahil ang calculator, kung ano lamang ang in-input natin, ay yun ang ibibigay sa ating sagot. So masasabi ko pa rin na mahalaga ang arithmetic dahil hindi naman kaya ng calculator na magbigay ng mga sagot tungkol sa problem solving. At ang problem solving ay tinutulungan tayo mag-identify mag ng patterns. At gamit ang arithmetic, kung meron tayong magandang foundation in terms of arithmetic and math, which are the four basic operations, we'll be able to identify patterns. At itong patterns na to ay isa sa mahalagang key na dapat matutunan ng mga sudyante natin at a very young age. They'll be able to make sense of the numbers. Malalaman nila kung ang sagot ba nila ay sensible. Malalaman nila kung ang sagot ba nila ay akma. Masyado bang malaki ang naging sagot or masyado liit ang naging sagot nila sa pag-compute nila? So yun yung mga bagay na maitutulong na, na malaki kapag meron tayong magandang foundation in terms of arithmetic and math. the same time, the level of numeracy depends on the type or the grade level of our students. So alam natin na kapag sa simula pa lamang ay hindi natin ma, 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 madidikta sa bata na kailangan niya ng matutong mag-add, mag-subtract, mag-multiply, or mag-divide. Sa murang edad pa lamang, kahit ang mga batang nasa edad na isang taong gulang or mga nasa edad na two years old, sabihin natin, marunong na kagad silang mag-familiarize ng numbers. So from that very young age, meron tayong tinatawag ng level of numeracy na nagkakaroon sila ng familiarity sa numbers habang tumatanda sila ay nag -e evolve yung familiarity nila sa numbers. At doon papasok ngayon yung arithmetic skills na dapat matutunan nila at ma-acquire nila. Para kung gayon ay sila ay mag-high school, they'll be able to use those basic of math 
so that they'll be able at the same time they'll be able to grasp higher form of mathematics learning so again balikan natin yung idea ng calculator it's right to use a calculator especially sa ating mga um, mga empleyado na nagwo-work sa sa mga malls or sa mga fast food sila ay madalas gumagamit ng calculator or gumagamit ng um, yung mga cashier gumagamit sila ng counter yung counter na to ay merong mga numero or merong mga um, built-in calculator na ginagamit nila. Pero sa paggamit natin ng calculator, maraming mga pwedeng errors ang pwede nating makuha or magawa. So pwede nating mapunta yung decimal place sa, sa ibang location na kung saan ay magiging dahilan kung bakit magkakaroon ka ng shortage sa iyong, um, sa iyong kaha or sa iyong budget dun sa, sa counter. Or pwede naman na tayo makapag key in ng excess na numbers na kung saan hindi magme-make sense na kumbaga ay eh, tatlong gamit lang naman ang binili ng isang uh, mamimili pero halos umabot na ng isang libo ang kanyang babayaran pero dahil ito sa maling error or yung sobrang pag-input natin ng mga numbers so tiwala tayo palagi na ang calculator ay magbibigay sa atin ng tamang sagot pero at the end of the day we have to think that those numbers will make sense Are those numbers giving us the right answer based kung ano yung situation na kina, kinalalagyan natin? So, importante pa rin na magkaroon tayo ng number sense. At itong number sense na to ay makukuha natin kung meron tayong magandang foundation in terms of the basic operations of math or yung tinatawag nating arithmetic. So, again, calculators won't help students to spat a pat pattern. So, kagaya na lang ng example na ito. I have here the numbers 1, 4, 10, 19, and what is the fifth number? So I guess, pag in-input natin ito sa calculator, hindi tayo mabibigyan ng tamang sagot ni calculator. Dahil ang calculator, inaasahan natin na magbibigay sa atin ng sagot kapag tayo nag-add, multiply, subtract, or divide, or even mga percentages. Pero sa ganitong klaseng Uh, mga questions sa mathematics, ina-expect natin na gagamit pa rin tayo ng basic operation ng add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Sa ganitong process, kailangan gumamit tayo ng addition or subtraction. So alam natin na mula 1 hanggang 4, ang difference ay 3. Mula 4 hanggang 10, ang difference ay 6. At mula 10 hanggang 9, ang difference ay 9. So ang pattern natin ay yung mga differences na nakuha natin, which are 3, 6, and 9. And I am expecting, I, if I am the student, I am expecting that the next number would be 12. The next number would, would, would accumulate kapag nag-add tayo ng 12 sa 19. So ang in-expect natin sagot dito ay 31. Again, hindi ito kayang ibigay sa atin na calculator. Ito yung mga questions na dapat merong number sense ability ang isang studyante na madadevelop kapag meron siyang strong foundation sa arithmetic o yung paggamit ng apat na basic operations ng math. Another example is this one. I have the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 16, and blank. And the last number would be 36. But the question is, pag ginamit ba natin ng addition sa calculator, multiplication, division, or subtraction, mabibigyan ba tayo ng sagot ng calculator? The answer is no. Pag in-input natin itong mga numbers nito sa calculator right from the numbers itself, hindi natin kayang makuha ang tama sagot. Pero kung merong matibay at merong magandang foundation ng arithmetic or ng number sense ang ating mga sudyante, kaya niyang ma-identify na ang operation dito ay multiplication. So if I multiply 1 and 1, the result is 1. If I multiply 2 and 2, the result is 2. If I multiply 3 and 3, the result is 9. 4 and 4, the result is 16. And I'm expecting that the next number will be multiplying 5 and 5 together. That will be 25. So ganong paraan, hindi kayang ma-spot ni calculator ang ganitong klaseng patterns. So mahalaga at importante ang bigyan natin ng toon or bigyan natin ng importansya na dapat merong magandang foundation ng ating mga sudyante pagdating sa mathematics. At magsisimula ito lahat sa pagkatuto at pagfamiliar ng mga sudyante or mga bata kung ano ba ang mga numbers um, I can still remember um, my my nephew who's now five years old who turned five last September 16 and I can't I can't believe na ha, ngayon ay marunong na siyang mag 
mag-add at mag-subtract ng numbers at the age of five, walang pinipiling edad ang pagkatuto sa arithmetic. At a very young age, one year old pa lang ang bata, kaya na niyang mag-identify ng numbers. So from there, nakikita natin nagla-level up. Hindi naman natin binigyan kagad ng calculator yung mga bata or yung mga sadyante at a very young age. So take for example, two years old, wala namang hawak na calculator yung bata ng mga panahon yun para pindot, pindutin ng mga numbers at mag-calculate ng addition subtraction. Maybe, ginagamit nila ang calculator nung time na yun, nakikita nila yung mga numbers which will be a very big help para ma-familiarize nila yung mga numero pagdating sa math at hindi sila matakot sa numbers. Kasi sabi nga natin, kapag yung mga bata ay takot sa numbers, malaking problema yan pagdating sa mathematics kapag sila ay pumapasok na sa skwelahan. So ngayon, gusto kong i-define sa inyo ano bang ibig sabihin ng arithmetic. When we talk about arithmetic, arithmetic is a branch of mathematics that deals with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The numbers or the use of numbers in calculation pertains to arithmetic. So gusto ko lamang bigyan pansin dito na ang arithmetic ay branch lang mathematics. Hindi ito patungkol kagad sa math kasi ang math ay isang malawak na konsepto or perspective. Pag sinabi natin arithmetic, ito ay patungkol lamang sa four basic operations. The four basic operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, those four basic operations are used in different ways or are has synonyms or Addition has synonyms with so many words. Subtraction has synonyms of so many words. Even multiplication and division. Kagaya na lamang ng addition, we can use the term add, plus, and, total, increase. And for subtraction, we can use the term take away, reduce, difference, how many more. And for multiplication naman, pwede natin gamitin yung mga terms na magpapatungkol sa multiplication, kagaya ng times, what's the product, double the number, triple the number, and for division naman, pwede tayong gumamit ng ibang mga uh, kahalintulad na salita or kahambing na salita kagaya ng share, we divide, we group them, divisible by, we share equally. So these are the terms that has the same meaning of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, hindi lang limited yung terms na pwede natin gamitin, ngunit marami tayong pwedeng mga terms na ma-encounter sa math na ang patungkol, patungkol pa din sa four basic operations. So, babalik at babalik tayo dun sa idea ng four basic operations kasi ang math naman talaga ay umiikot lamang dun sa four basic operations, kahit umabot tayo sa mga idea ng higher math, like for example, in, in analytical geometry or in, in higher statistics, laging babalik tayo sa idea ng four basic operations. So dapat, ito ang um, uh, masabi natin very founded yung idea ng four basic operations ng ating mga sudyante. Meron lang, tamang, meron lang tayo mga trauma na, or mga dilemma pagdating sa ganitong bagay. So take for example, kung ako ay tama at maalala ko ng tama ng, nung grade 4 ako, ang pinakatumatak sa aking lesson ng grade 4 ako sa math ay dapat marunong ako mag-multiply. So kapag grade 4, automatic dapat marunong ka na mag-multiply. It can be a one-digit number or two-digit numbers or three-digit numbers. Kailangan marunong ka mag-multiply. Pero kung titignan natin, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon or hindi, sa, hindi lahat ng bata ay agad-agad matututunan ang multiplication. Pero sabi ng skwelahan, kailangan natin i-promote yung bata. So ang magiging dilema natin ngayon dito ay paano kapag umakit yung bata ng 5th grade or ng grade 5, can that student use the operation of multiplication? Can that student survive in terms of mathematics kapag ginamit na ang multiplication sa 5th grade or sa 6th grade? So yung dilemma or yung problema ng bata ay nagpapatong-patong. So bilang ako, bilang isang guro, ang unang-una kong iisipin ay ano ba ang alam na ng mga sadyante ko? So dapat mag-check tayo ng prior knowledge. Kung ito ay pa-start pa lang naman ng school year, check natin yung background ng mga bata. Ano na ba yung nalaman o natutunan nila pagdating sa four basic operations? Kasi kahit anong gawin natin, gagamitin at gagamitin natin itong four basic operations na ito. Kahit anong class in problem solving yung mga may encounter natin for basic math or for higher math subjects, 
lagi-lagi babalik tayo sa four basic operations. So, dapat maging founded ito sa murang edad pa lamang or sa K to 6. So, from kinder to grade 6, dapat familiar ka agad ang bata kung paano niya gagamitin or papaikutin ang mga operations na ito. Dahil hanggang tumanda ang bata, ay dapat mai-apply niya yung konsepto ng four basic operations. Kasi ang math naman talaga, gagaya nga ng sinabi ko kanina, kahit mahirap na subject pa yan ng math, babalik at babalik sa konsepto ng four basic operations. So the very question right now in terms of our discussion for this webinar is how do we strengthen arithmetic in mathematics? So paano ba natin mapapalakas or mapapatibay yung arithmetic sa mathematics ng mga sudyante natin? Um, sana marami mga uh, guro sa baitang maybe sa kinder or sa sixth grade from kinder to sixth grade ang nanonood ngayon para um, ma-share ko sa inyo yung mga steps or even mga best practices na nagagawa ko dito sa America or even way back to Philippines na nagtuturo pa ako sa Pilipinas kung ano ba yung mga pwede kong ma-share sa inyo na pwede ninyong may apply para sa gayon ay ma-strengthen natin yung arithmetic or yung basic math ng mga bata. So I'd like to quote this statement from John Marsh saying, if your calculation skills is very good, then the, that makes all areas of math easier and quicker. 100% I would agree on this statement. Why? Because math is about four basic operations. Because math is all about how you add, how you subtract, how you multiply or divide. Because math will revolve on those four basic operations. Madagdagan man yan ng variable or madagdagan man yan ng x, ng y, or ng z, or ng kahit anong variables. Madagdagan man yan ng negative sign or ng absolute value pagdating yan ng math. Babalik at babalik pa rin sila sa konsepto ng papano mag-add paano mag-multiply, paano mag-subtract, or paano mag-divide. So kahit anong klaseng math ang aaralin ng ating mga estudyante, may encounter at may encounter nila ang four basic operations na to. Kaya naniniwala ko at nag-a-agree din ako kay John Marsh na kapag meron tayong magandang foundation sa mathematics in terms of calculation or the arithmetic, then all areas of math will be easier and quicker. It would not be totally 100% easier. But I'm telling you that it will be very helpful para mas maintindihan nila ng mas malalim yung mga konsepto na higher level na in terms of the math subject. So according to John Mars, there are seven steps to improve in terms of basic calculation or calculation skills. And I would like to share this to you kasi ito din yung natutunan ko at naiya-apply ko kung ano yung mga steps na dapat nating makita or magawa para sa gayon ay ma-improve natin yung yung ability ng mga sujante natin on to do computations or calculations or the basic math or the arithmetic. So the first step would be start with easy calculation. Gaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, at a very young age, napa-familiarize na ng mga bata at a very young age of one or two years old or three years old, alam na nila ko ano yung number one, alam na nila ko ano yung number two, what is number three or what is number four, and they can say it out loud. So from there, alam natin na yung bata ay hindi takot sa math or hindi takot sa numbers. So saan ba nagsisimula yung gap? Saan ba nagsisimula yung gap na natatakot yung bata sa numbers? Babalik tayo sa idea na paano niya ba natutunan yung basic computation? So dito sa step number one, it's, it's telling us to, to consider that we start on an easy calculation. So from K to 6, basic math concepts are taught or are, are, are discovered by the students or being told by the teacher in the classrooms. And this stage ng pagkatuto ng bata sa math ay ang pinaka-crucial. I'm a middle school teacher. I was able to teach 6th graders. And I know how, how important this basic concepts for my students as 6th graders. Alam ko kung paano sila nag struggle sa computation. Naranasan ko or nakita ko kung paano sila nag struggle sa computation. So, ibabalik natin yung idea na bigyan natin sila ng mga basic computation or calculation. So, start with the easy calculations. So, from kinder, alam natin na familiarity of numbers, from place values, decimal, 
or aabot hanggang grade 1, marunong sila mag-add. Pagdating ng grade 2, marunong sila mag-subtract. Pagdating ng grade 3, marunong sila mag-subtract ng mas malalaking numbers or magkakaroon sila ng idea ng mga bigger numbers or hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so on and so forth. Pagdating ng grade 4, and dito ang multiplication or counting introduction and division. At pagdating ng 5th grade, andun ang division, andun ang fraction, ang percentage, hanggang umabot ng grade 6. So makikita natin na ang stretch ng basic math ng mga bata or ng mga sudyante natin ay nasa K to 6. So dapat itong, itong taon ng pagkatuto ng bata sa math from kinder to grade 6 ang pinaka-establish na concept na dapat matutunan nila sa math. I was able to teach senior high school back in the Philippines at alam ko ang struggle ng mga bata na mayroong pa difficulty in terms of four basic operations. You believe me or not, it's up to you, but I can still remember one of my students having difficulty in adding integers. I know integers are taught from like seventh grade. So ang integers ay ini-introduce sa seventh grade or maybe may mga sixth graders na nag-introduce na ng integers or fifth graders. I'm not particular or I'm not sure right now, but one thing is for sure, nandun sa, bra sa bracket na yan, from 5th to 7th grade, yung idea ng integers. Pero yung sudyante kung nasa senior high school na, nahihirapan pa din mag-add or mag-subtract ng integers, nagkakamali-mali pa din. At babalik pa rin tayo sa idea na marunong ba mag-add yung bata? Marunong ba mag-subtract yung bata, multiply or divide? Or even yung idea ng fraction, kung ating mababalikan yung yung ibang mga concepts ng math, ang fraction ay meron ding involvement ang operations doon, di ba? Pag ginamit natin ang mga fraction sa problem solving, babalik at babalik yung konsepto ng math na magkailangan nila mag-add, mag-subtract, or mag-multiply or divide. So kailangan itong K-6 to or basic math concept ng mga bata ay very founded. Kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, papani yun sir kapag may mga batang kailangan talagang i-promote kahit um, sabihin nating hindi pa sila ready for the next grade level. Um, kailangan nating mag-reflect. Um, okay lang ba sa atin na, na i-promote ang bata? Alam nating pagdating ng araw ay babalik at babalik yung dilemma ng bata in terms of the basic calculation. So as a teacher, we reflect. We try to look for ways para sa gayon ay matulungan talaga natin yung bata. Bigyan natin na maraming practice exercises. Bigyan natin na maraming mga activities at the same time, we make sure that we, we supervise them. We, we make sure that their parents know that what we are giving in excess would really help them on the long run. Makikita natin na hindi siya magiging struggle pagdating ng, ng 7th grade or ng 8th grade kasi na nagawa natin ng paraan. So ngayon, kung yung mga basic computations or calculations na yun, or yung operations na add, subtract, multiply, or divide, at hindi natin matroubleshoot, dun ngayon papasok yung mga interventions. There are two interventions that I'm thinking right now. So if ever the student is not yet ready to be promoted, what, what the best, best thing that we can do when we promote the student to the next level, we make sure that we communicate to the next subject teacher. We make sure that we... Um, we inform the subject teacher ano na ba ko ano na bang concepts ng math ang hindi pa alam ng bata sana merong ganong communication from from one grade to another kapag tumatalon yung mga bata or kapag na promote sana nagkakaroon tayo ng bridging program na kung saan bago mag-start ng mismong competency si teacher number 2, yung pangalawang teacher niya na bago ngayon for the next grade level, bago siya mag-start ng competency, mai-relay na natin yung information sa kanya na, ah, ito yung mga students ko na to, students 1 to 10, ay medyo kailangan nating gabayan pa to sa, sa concept ng multiplication kasi nung nakaraang taon ay nagkakaroon sila ng struggle in terms of multiplication. So doon makikita natin na nagkakaroon tayo ng intervention. Pero second intervention, bago pa lang sana ma-promote yung bata, na materialize na natin or na make sure na natin na talagang nabigay na natin yung best effort or yung um, um, most possible effort or uh, I, I guess in yung pinaka magandang magagawa natin para matulungan natin yung bata. Nabigyan na natin ng mga activities, 
na nabigyan na natin ng drills, na gabayan na natin, na one-on-one na natin, na inform na natin ng parent. Maraming possible interventions, but again, I only enumerated two or only identified to one. We make sure that we provide interventions during our time with the student. So dapat um, from first grading to fourth grading, dapat nagabayan talaga natin yung bata na kung saan meron ba talaga siyang difficulty, ay pagdating yan ng next grade level, ay makommunicate natin kay next teacher para sa gayon ay ma-bridge pa din yung, yung gap ng operations natin or yung basic operations ng bata. Okay? So that's the first step. Second step is learn tricks. This is very interesting because pag may mga tricks or sinatawag nating shortcut na natutunan yung mga bata, na napapabilib tayo sa mga bata paminsan-minsan kapag nakikita natin, ay, ang galing ng batang to kasi ang bilis niya mag-compute sa utak niya or na-formulate niya. And, and, and that's, that's ability and that's, that's wisdom for our students. So, paano ba natin ma, ma, matutulungan yung mga bata makakuha ng tricks? So, hayaan natin sila makahanap ng patterns. Kagaya ng inintroduce ko kanina, dapat meron silang number sense. Makita nila yung mga patterns ng mga numbers. So, isang example dito yung pagkakaroon ng idea ng divis, divis, divisibility rule. I'm sorry for that. Divisibility rule. So, kapag ang numbers ay nagtatapos sa zero, alam nila na ito ay divisible by five or by ten. Kung sakali mang ito ay bigger number. Alam nila kapag ito ay nagtatapos sa two, sa four, sa six, sa eight, or sa zero, ito ay divisible by, possible divisible by two. So, yun yung mga numbers na dapat nakikita nila ng patterns. Na isang example nga dito, yung divisibility rule. Activities na pwede nating maturuan yung mga bata for learn tricks, um, for tricks in math, with, I can still remember during my grade school days, hindi, hindi naman ako totally ganun kagaling sa math or yung mga kasama ko sa MTOP, pero kami ay pursigidong-pursigido pa din pinapasok ng mga magulang namin mag-enroll sa MTOP. Naaalala ko tong mga panahong ito dahil kahit gano'n man kahirap yung mga, yung mga questions sa MTOP because we're like 40 students in one session. Tapos bibigyan kami ng worksheets, tapos magkasagot kami. Tapos right after that, mag, uh, mag-discuss sa teacher sa board, babanggitin ko ano yung mga tamang sagot or yung mga solution for numbers 1 to 10 for our first day. Makikita mo doon na nag-formulate yung utak ng bata or I myself, I was able to consider uh, or to, to learn lots of tricks and shortcuts in terms of um, computation or basic computation na aganto ah, lang pala mag-add ng fraction ng mabilis, aganto ah, lang pala mag-multiply ng, ng mas mabilis. Kasi sa MTAP, maraming mga uh, mga shortcuts or maraming mga tricks na tinuturo or pwedeng matutunan ng mga bata kahit hindi sila ganun kaliterate sa math. Again, walang limitation ng pagsali sa MTAP. Sana hanggang ngayon, no, ganun pa rin ang, ang policy para makasali ang mga bata sa MTAP every Saturday yon. So hopefully, meron pa din ganun program ang Department of Education in terms of um, giving opportunities for kids, not only for those who are literate in math, but also for those kids who, who are willing to be literate, who are willing to, to learn more and to do more besides sa uh, five days na pagpasok nila sa school. So, the same time, ngayon, nauso yung mga manipulative. So, maraming mga tricks na pwede natin matutunan na pag-identify pag nila ng patterns, pag-join nila ng mga activities na kung saan uh, meron silang mga inputs na panibago or mga, mga sharing na makukuha ng mga bagong uh, tricks or mga bagong shortcuts in terms of math. And one uh, another thing would be the use of manipulatives na pwede nilang ma-materialize because not all students are, are good in mental math. We, 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 we also consider those students who are visual learners, who are used to, to manipulate things or to have them use the things na kailangan hawak nila. So use of manipulatives would be another way para matutunan nilang makapag-formulate ng shortcut or ng tricks in terms of operations ng math. So that will be step number two. For step number three, um, kagaya na binanggit ko kanina, hindi lahat ng bata ay, ay magaling mag-mental ng, uh, mag-mental math or mag-mental computation. So mahalaga din na sila ay nag-take down notes. So steps for, for, for us to make sure that our kids are improving in terms of calculation, na isusulat nila, nakikita nila kung ano yung computation, nakikita nila kung bakit naging two ang one plus one, Bakit naging 4 ang 3 plus 1? 
So naisusulat nila at at the same time nakikita ng kanilang mata, na formulate ng brain nila yung idea na ah kapag 1 plus 3 alam ko 4 ito. So may times na papasok yung idea na memorization. So sabi nila ang math naman daw ay memorization. The answer is somehow yes. Okay? I'm not saying totally yes because I've I've experienced kids that are good in memorization and they are good in math. But not all kids good in memorization are good in math. So there are kids na applicable ito. So it's it's a good step for us to consider. We always make sure that our kids are taking down notes pagdating sa math. Okay? Wag nating wag nating hayaan na okay lang 'yan, computation lang naman 'yan eh. Kasi doon natin mapapractice yung bata na mag-show ng solution. Remember, kapag nagbibigay tayo ng problem solving, kahit 6th grader or mga 1st grader pa lang yan, we always make sure that they put, they put their solutions kasi doon natin tinitignan kung tama ba, tama ba yung nagiging formula or tama ba yung nagiging process ng pag-solve ng bata. Kasi pagdating niya ng higher grade, tapos sasabihin natin, okay, show your solution. Eh, hindi na nila na-master yung ganong idea nung grade school sila. So dapat napapractice na nila yon. Step number three would really be very important because we tend to ask our kids of their solutions. Well, in fact, dapat tinuturuan natin sila magsulat, magtake down notes in terms of calculation para kapag um, habang tumatagal na natututo sila ng mga higher math subjects, na ma-master nila yung idea or yung 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 wisdom ng pagno-note taking at the same time na sasana yung kanilang yung kanilang math computation skills na ah, kapag nag-solve ako ng problem solving, dapat meron na akong pinapakitang solution. Okay? Again, in terms of solution, pwedeng magkaroon ng bata ng ibang solution pero tama yung proseso. So, doon mo rin makikita kung anong anong way ng thinking ng bata sa pagko-compute. So, maraming skills na pwedeng ma-develop at ma-improve dito. Specifically, yung paggamit nila ng four basic operations. So, others are visual learners. Because at the same time, when they see their writings and when they see um, their solutions or when they see the process of doing that math or calculation, they'll be able to to at least train their memory. Or yung sinasabi ko nga kanina na merong mga bata na magaling mag-memorize or merong, merong ability to memorize such numbers kahit marami pa yan, naaalala niya lahat yun. So it, it would help boost the memory of our students at a very young age. Okay, so that will be step number three. Now, for step number four, we can make use of our fingers in terms of operation. I know what what operation you're thinking right now, and this is very important. Um, balikan lang natin ang mga bata na tututok agad magbilang yun eh. Ano ang ginagamit natin pambilang uh, para matutok magbilang ang mga bata? Ang kanila mga dalire. So may mga kanta na sa pung mga dalire. So alam ka agad nila yung number ten. Or kapag sinabi natin, okay anak, magbilang ka. What's this number? What is this? One, two, three, four, five. So at a very young age, na-expose na natin yung bata na ang kamay ay isa sa mga, uh, sabi natin, isa sa mga tools na pwede na nilang gamitin kapag gumagamit sila ng basic operations or calculation. So hindi lang basta pindot sa calculator ang paggamit ng kamay para makapag-compute sila. They can make use of their hands when they're adding, when they're subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, di ba? Pero naaalala ko na ang paggamit natin ng daliri, it's very famous on fourth grade. Na kapag gumamit tayo ng multiplication or kailangan natin mag-multiply, we use our fingers to multiply. I hope na may mga ang mga bata natin ngayon ay marunong gumamit ng ganitong klaseng tool o paggamit ng kamay para mag-multiply. Kasi na ma-master nila or napa-perfect nila yung idea na ah, ito 7 times 7 is 49. Ito ay 6 times 9 is 54. So ganun yung mga calculation na, na very quick yung response ng bata. Kasi bukod sa kaya niyang hawakan yung tool na panggamit niya sa calculation, eh nakikita niya mismo, na-visualize niya mismo yung mga yung mga numbers na nare-represent ng mga fingers natin. So it would help boost the concept of multiplication. And remember a while ago I said basic counting starts using your finger. So at a very young age tinuturuan na natin ng mga bata na kapag dating sa numbers, ang gagamitin nilang pambilang ay kamay. So bibilangin natin yung mga daliri natin. Natutunan ng mga bata yung at a very young age kung paano magbilang ng numbers 1 to 10. So pag sinabi natin ganito, ang sabi ng bata ay 4. So kapag ginamit ko ngayon to sa multiplication, panibagong meaning na ang ma-associate niya. So doon na bu-boost natin or na na-enhance natin yung yung ability ng bata maging critical thinker. 
Okay? So that will be for step number four. They can make use of their fingers in terms of the operation of multiplication. Sana maibalik ito or sana ma, ano, mapagpatuloy pa din yung ganitong, yung ganitong concepto pagdating sa multiplication. And next, number five, we improve calculation skills by having games. I know that there are plenty of games that they can use on their phone, but we will limit those games in terms of what is really important. This one would would remind me of my childhood that during my my younger days uh, i was able to learn how to play chess not only to play but also to know how to play better or to know how to play best on chess at inaaral talaga ito so ito ay isa sa mga naging susi ng pagkatuto ko or masasabi kong um nagboost ng memory ko in terms of the subject path malaking tulong ang pagkatuto ng chess or pagka pagkaalam ng mga bata kung paano maglaro ng chess uh, i know that chess is not any more familiar to our kids nowadays kasi marami na mga mobile games na pwede nilang laruin pero sana uh, may suggest natin sa mga parents at a very young age na mag maging involved yung yung larong ito or yung yung sport na ito para sa gayon ay matulungan natin yung bata na ma improve yung calculation skills niya because what what plays what playing chess is giving us or um, improving in terms of our students yung critical thinking skills because on chess you're making decisions as you think ahead so ito yung yung pinaka um, crucial or critical part ng ng ating pag-iisip in terms of the subject math na kapag critical thinker ka daw dapat i mean kapag critical thinker ka magaling ka daw sa math that's that's true yeah that's true because critical thinkers are always trying to 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 foresee things that's going to happen next and this this game or this sport would really be very helpful okay not only just playing games on mobile phones but also playing this one at the same time maganda rin ito na bonding ng ng family diba so isa ito sa mga bagay na pwede nating ma-suggest sa ating mga parents oh or even sa mga students natin na alam natin talagang kailangan ma-boost natin yung calculation skills nila kasi ang lakgan ng benefits nito sa kanila bilang mga uh, learners sila ng subject na math. So that will be step five. For step number six will be practice. You've been telling this to your students in terms of the math subject. I know, at um, pagod na pagod na yung mga bata kaka-practice at practice at practice, but know that practice makes perfect. Okay? So we always tell them the, the the wisdom behind practices, the wisdom doing all the practice exercises. We tell them and we 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 show them, okay, that we are also practicing. We are also doing our very best. At nakikita nila na tayo din as a teacher. We are practicing with them. So minu monitor natin sila. But on on my own perspective. I do believe on this statement that practice makes perfect. But on my own perspective, and I think you've heard this um, from other people as well, that practice makes close to perfection. Okay? Kasi pag sinabi natin perfect, um, kaya niya mag-multiply ng 10-digit numbers sa loob ng 5 seconds at kaya niya mag-multiply ng 10-digit numbers sa loob din ng 5 seconds. So medyo mahirap yun. So ang idea ko dito is practice makes close to perfection. Kaya niya. Hindi man ganun kapareho ng number of seconds pero yung idea na nakakapag-practice siya, marunong siya at ma maalam siya sa paggamit ng mga operations. So, pag nag-drill na si teacher sa loob ng classroom, pag nag-flashcards na si teacher sa loob ng classroom, napapractice natin yung mga bata. It would just be 5 to 10 minutes of your time kapag nagkakaroon sila ng mga practice exercises. Okay? Kasi alam naman natin na ang, ang um, span ng bata in terms of attention or yung attention span ng bata ay very minimal. So, bigyan natin sila ng mga practice exercises na paunti-unti hanggang sa mag masanay sila na nagkakaroon sila ng practice exercises. Tapos habang tumatagal, di na nila napapansin na nag nagpa-practice exercises na sila for 30 minutes. So, yun yung mga bagay na dapat consider natin in terms of doing some practice exercises inside the classroom. Okay? At the same time, when you're doing practice exercises, it trains your brain. Okay? It would help you train your brain to formulate, to compute, to, to analyze, and to, to be critical thinker na kung saan doon papasok yung idea na, ah, yung, yung sudyanting ito ay magaling na mag-mental math. So, 
kaka-practice yun ng kaka-practice ni teacher. Or kaka-practice ng kaka-practice yun ni parent kasi hindi lamang sa school natututo yung bata in terms of the operation so baka natuturuan din sa bahay. So malaking importansya din dito yung yung nagkakaroon ng ng um, ng feedback or ng continuation ng learning sa bahay kapag nag-practice exercises sa school si student. So dapat kahit sa bahay nagpa-practice exercises din. Okay? So step number six is to practice. And again, practice makes close to perfe perfection or the very famous saying that practice makes perfect. Okay? Step number seven, the last step to improve calculation skills. Again, these are just not the limited limited steps that you can take note of. Maraming steps, but these are the the things that I personally applied in my classroom, I personally applied or in, in my teaching for the past nine years. So with the use of the internet for step number seven, online materials are now readily available. Let's make use of those online materials, okay? We, we download, we make sure that we put the reference on our, our hard copy and we make sure we cite the sources or the, the resources of our uh, online materials. Kasi yung mga online materials nito, such as worksheets, interactive games, or educational videos would really be very helpful nowadays because of our, our types of students na meron tayo ngayong 21st century. Ibang-iba sa meron tayo or meron ng mga panahong like 20 years ago. So ibang klaseng mga bata at ibang klase ang pagkatuto ng mga bata in terms of math. So sila ay nabuhay or namulat sa sa mundo na meron ng computer, namulat sila or um, na nagkaroon sila ng muang sa mundo na meron ng cellular phone and we cannot blame them for having those things with, within the span of their birth or yung kanilang pag, pagkatuto. Ay meron ng mga computers or may mga gadgets na ang gawin ngayon natin, i-materialize natin yun. Kasi noon wala naman talagang mga computers, walang cellular phone. So talagang very basic ang pagkatuto natin ng math. Pero ngayon kasi nabuhay sila na merong mga ganitong materials. And again, we cannot blame our kids, our students for having those things with them during this, this, this era. So itong 21st century learners natin ay very challenging. So kung tayo ay natuto or nasanay bilang mga teacher sa ganitong klaseng setup ng pagtuturo ng math, at ngayon ay available ng internet for all the materials that they need for to improve their calculation skills in math, gamitin natin itong um, tools na mga to para mas ma, uh, maigay natin yung mga bata sa kung ano ang meron sila ngayon, na kung ano ang nakagis na nila ngayon. Okay? mag a talaga tayo mga teachers, lalo na ngayon na um, most of the schools in the Philippines are doing online learning or virtual learning or what we call the learn at home or um, what they call that one um, yeah learn at home so ngayon masasabi natin na talagang technology ang ating kaakibat ngayon mahirap man aralin pero at the same time wala namang masama kung magsisimula tayong mag-aral ulit okay hindi naman natatapos sa pag-graduate sa kolehiyo or sa master's degree or sa PhD ang ating pagkatuto bilang mga teachers so ngayon may mga bagong hamon na dapat tayo ay matuto at ito yung paggamit ng internet or yung paggamit ng online learning okay so ma-materialize natin tong mga mga activities na to or mga works na to na pwede nating ma-download and i think Vibal Publishing House is offering or has this type of materials that we can use and we can make use. And we, we want to inquire about this one. We can just inform or send an email to Vibal Group Publishing House regarding their online materials that they can offer to us teachers and at the same time sa administrators natin. At kapag na-materialize natin ito, we can um, suggest this to other teachers na ito magandang gamitin. I-share natin yung mga practices na ganun na kung saan hindi lang para sa atin yung mga best practices na ganun. Okay, so again, seven steps in terms of um, um, ability or to enhance the ability of students in terms of um, calculation. There are seven things that I shared or seven steps. The first one is start with easy calculation. The second one is learn tricks, write all calculation, make use of your fingers, especially in multiplication or maybe in familiarity of numbers, interactive games, practice, and the use of the internet, okay? So those are the seven steps that we can, add, we can, and I personally wanted you to take a look at it and make sure that you try if it's applicable to your classroom setup or if it's applicable to your, to your scenario right now. 
baka pwede din nating may adapt ito sa pag pagtuturo ng mga bata in terms of the arithmetic and math or the basic operations. Okay? So right now I will be sharing to you what are my best practices and at the same time I asked some of my colleagues here in the United States what are their best practices in terms of strengthening arithmetic in mathematics. So ang tanong-tanong ako ng mga teachers ko ano ba yung pwedeng nilang masabi na uh, ito magandang um i-apply to sa loob ng classroom. Ah, magandang maging ano natin to, maging tool natin to para ma-enhance natin yung arithmetic skills ng mga bata in terms of the subject math. So the first best practice would be in terms of drills, motivation or we call it exit ticket. Or exit ticket I back in the Philippines I'm not sure kung ginagamit natin yung term na exit ticket. We usually use sit work or we usually use um one liner question. To, to make sure that they understood the lesson or the topic that you discussed during that day. But here in America, we're using exit ticket to make sure that that exit ticket is turned in by the student and we'll be able to see if they grasp the lessons or the competencies that we are targeting for that day. So aside from that one, we also still using flashcards. This one is, um, I'm not claiming that it's only me who formulated this idea, but I, I got this one from my colleague also back in the Philippines that we're using 555 quiz. I'll explain later on about the 555 quiz. It's not the 555 tuna or, or what, but it's a 555 quiz, okay? So I ayoko mag ads dito, okay? So the, the fourth one will be the use of worksheets. Later on, I'll explain what other worksheets that you can use and online websites for practice exercises. I'm really excited to share to you the, the last part later on. I'll be sharing to you one website or online website wherein you can you can ask your kids to do practice exercises there. That here in the United States, we're using that one most of the time. Okay, so first one is drill motivation. So I'd like to focus on exit tickets, but before, before I ex explain more about exit ticket, we also make sure that during our motivation, we check the target competencies. Okay, bago tayo magpa-motivation activity sa bata in terms of basic operation, huwag ka agad tayong diretsyo ng diretsyo sa drills or sa flashcards. Check muna natin yung competencies na matatarget natin bilang teacher. And we also check their prior knowledge, which is very, very, very important. Because kahit anong gawing hila natin sa bata kapag gusto natin matuto sila ng multiplication, pero hindi pa sila marunong mag mag-familiarize ng numbers in terms of multiplication, wala silang idea in terms of multiplication, or kapag gusto natin silang mag-add or subtract ng mga smaller numbers, pero wala silang idea what are ones, tens, hundreds, yung place value, hindi nila alam. So we check the prior knowledge of our students. That is very crucial in terms of their learning. Okay, We always consider, that's the biggest point that I want to take note right now, we check their prior knowledge. Okay. And this one, the exit ticket. Um, the very purpose actually of exit ticket is not only to check their understanding, but also to check their common mistakes. In terms of math, alam natin na um, mayroon at mayroon mga batang magkakamali or kung mayroon man, very minimal kung maganda ang naging discussion natin. Pero kung medyo naging komplikado ang discussion natin, exit ticket would help you to, to identify what went wrong. So that when you go to your, I mean, when you go to your next class, alam mo kung paano babaguhin yung lesson plan na ginawa. Paano mo siya ipapaikutin, paano mo siya i-adjust. At pagbalik mo sa klase mo na yan, the following day, you have read all their exit tickets. And that exit tickets would serve as your reflection. Na kung saan, ah, ito yung naging problema ng bata. Nagkaroon siya ng conflict in terms of paano mag-add ng mga two-digit numbers, nagkaroon ng conflict pa paano mag-multiply ng mga numbers na bigger than 50, yung mga numbers na mag divide sila, merong remainder. So, ito yung mga dapat nakikita natin bilang teacher. Siguro maging maagap tayo or mag at maging magsipag sa pag-check ng mga common mistakes ng mga bata. Kasi this common mistakes would really need to be troubleshoot, would really need to be fixed. Kasi kapag hinayaan lang natin itong mga common mistakes na ito, it will be still be a common mistake years and years from now. Okay, so we, we wanted this to be fixed. We wanted this to be bridged. 
at ma, ma, ma make sure natin na yung gap in terms of those common mistakes ay magawa natin ng paraan bilang nasa atin pa naman yung mga bata. So we use this exit ticket. It would just be like one to two questions or one to five questions na pwede natin gamitin or gawin. Tapos bago lumabas yung bata or bago ka lumabas sa classroom mo, ita turn in nila or isa submit nila yung exit tickets nila. Doon makikita mo pag uwi mo ng bahay or pag break time mo makikita mo, matatsikan mo na kagad yung exit tickets nila, makikita mo doon kung ano yung common mistakes ng mga bata. Malaking tulong ito sa mga teachers at malaking tulong ito sa akin habang ako ay nagtuturo at nakikita ko kung saan ba dapat mas mag-focus ako ngayon. Para pagdating ng kinabukasan, may adjust ko yung lesson plan na na pinlano ko for one school year, na pinlano ko for one week or two weeks. Kasi, kasi kada araw, mag-iiba at mag-iiba ang lesson plan. It should be very flexible. And at the same time, tayo bilang mga teachers, itong mga common mistakes ng mga sadyante natin ay magawa natin ng paraan. At masolusyonan agad natin. Kasi kapag lumaon at hinayaan lang natin itong common mistakes ito, malaking, malaking bigat ito sa mga sadyante natin. At dadalhin nila itong common mistakes ito hanggang umakat sila ng higher math or ng higher grade level. Okay? So that will be the first best practice. Second, um, very, very familiar at very common na itong flashcards. But I hope we're still using this one for the grade school students. Napaka malaking tulong nito kasi kahit sa bahay, kayang-kayang gumawa ng estudyante ng flashcards. Actually, um, during the time na tuturo ako ng 7th graders or 7th grade students uh, back in the Philippines, I asked them to make their own flashcards. Okay, sila yung gagawa ng flashcards nila. They put their number, the numbers that they want because back then I was teaching them how to multiply integers or how to add integers or subtract integers during the seventh grade. So, ang sabi ko sa kanila, gawa kayo ng flashcard, you write your own integer, you write your own number, then pagdating sa school, gagamitin natin yung flashcard na ginawa mo. Tuwan-tuwa yung mga bata kapag nakikita nilang ginagamit yung flashcard na ginawa nila. At the same time, makikita nila yung sagot dun sa likod ng flashcard. So kada flash mo ng, ng bawat cards, andun kagad yung sagot sa likuran. So kung kailangan nilang i-review yung item na yon or yung flashcard na yon, kaya nilang makita yung sagot sa likuran at kaya nilang balikan kung ano yung tamang proseso ng pagsagot sa operation na yon. So you encourage your students to make their own flashcards. You encourage your students to bring their own flashcards in school if ever mag-back tayo ng face-to-face -face or ng brick-and-mortar setup because right now I know that we are doing online classes, but we can also ask them to make PowerPoint presentation or to make um, some slides na kung saan you let them present, you let them show their flashcards. Tapos mas, mas malak, malaking encouragement yun sa mga bata kapag nakikita nila yung gawa nila yung, yung pinepresent sa loob ng classroom or sa mismong presentation or sa online classes ninyo. So in elementary and high school, it would never be... Um, late or it will never be too old for high school students to use flashcards, okay? Kaya natin balikan or kahit yung mga high school, balikan natin yung concept ng fractions. I know that fractions is really a struggle for our high school students. So balikan natin yung fractions, gamit tayo ng flashcards, okay? But again, I would really emphasize that from the elementary stage or elementary school, we really have to make sure that our kids has the best um, foundation of mathematics. So this is one of the best practices that I'm sharing to you. And again, my main point here is you let them, you make them um, create their own flash flashcards. You, you ask them to share their flashcards because that would start the encouragement from the students that I am, I am being recognized, okay? Uh, I am being um, identified as, as someone who knows math in the classroom. Not really good, but who knows math would be enough, okay? And this flashcard would also develop speed and accuracy. So kada flash mo ng kada flash ng mga cards, makikita mo na habang lumalaon, bumibilis yung mga bata sa pagsagot at nagpapaunahan na sila sa pagsagot. At ikaw bilang teacher, ang laking, ano to, ang laking, ang laking saya na naidudulot sa inyo to because you are seeing your kids really participating, actively participating in your classroom. And the end of the day, you would say that my plan went well. My lesson plan went well. So, dun pala makikita mo na talagang very rewarding yung makakita ng ganong klaseng um, environment sa loob ng classroom. So, we, we create that environment. We as a teacher, we are the one creating that type of environment. So, we encourage our kids or our students. So, from there, kapag na-develop na nila yung speed and accuracy in terms of these flashcards at ma masanay sila na 
napapractice yung kanilang um, ability to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, magkakaroon tayo na ngayon ng higher level of understanding. So, mas mapapabilis yung mga bata sa computation. Doon ngayon papasok na ay yung sudyante ko magaling na mag-mental math. Kahit hindi na sila gumamit ng daliri for multiplication, they can do mental math already because their brain was trained because of those practice exercises. Okay? So, malaking factor yung mga practice exercises na yun. Okay, this one, um, we've been using this one back in the Philippines. We call it 555 quiz. It's not actually quiz as graded. We use the term quiz so that students will prepare because we want our kids to come to our classroom or go to school ready at all times to go to your subjects or to join your subjects 100% ready. So we make sure that this 5-5 quiz would be graded, uh, will be recorded, and this would reflect their progress. Kung makikita natin from the beginning or yung unang 5-5-5 quiz nila ay ang score lang ng bata ay 2, pero habang lumalao na magiging score na ng bata ay 5, consistent na 5, or merong mistake na 1, or magkakaroon sila ng score na 4, at least nakikita mo yung progress pag nirecord mo yung scores na to. So what's the process of this one? You're giving them 5 items for 5 minutes for 5 points. Okay? And this can be by checking of prior knowledge. Kung ang next topic mo ay hindi kaduktong nung topic mo ngayong araw, for tomorrow's topic, ito ay bago sa kanila, you tell them the topic and let the kids read about the topic. You make sure that you give the assignment ahead of time para malaanan ng oras ng mga bata during their breaks or even during their uh, free time at home. This is the purpose of checking their prior knowledge. So you give them five items for five minutes and five points. I know that this is time-bounded. Okay, because we want to train our kids to, to do math or to do computations in, in a short span of time para hindi tumatagal yung bata sa computation. Kasi pagkatapos ng computation ng problem solving, dapat mag-explain pa yung bata ng final answer or magkaroon pa ng solution yung bata for final answer niya. So hindi lang basta sa basic computation tumatagal dapat ang bata. So tinitrain na natin siya dito sa 555 na to na kada item meron siyang one minute para sumagot. We train them. At first, yes, mahirap. Magkakaroon ng problema kasi magre-reklamo yung mga bata. Sir, wait lang po, wait lang po, hindi pa po ako tapos. Pero at the end of the day, pag nakita mo yung results nito pang matagalan or for one week or one month, makikita mo na yung mga bata, trained na sila that every item should just last for one minute or less. Okay? We train them. We practice them. So, hindi lang to sa pang-umpisa ng school year. So, dapat ito ay consistent. Okay? Okay? Very consistent tayo dito para pagpasok mo pa lang sa classroom, alam ng bata na ay may 555 quiz kami ngayon. Nakaredy na ako ng materials ko. Nakaredy na ako ng, ng, ng mental state ko na meron na akong 555 quiz ngayong araw na to. Kasi alam ko at natrain ako ni teacher na meron na akong 555 quiz. Aside from checking prior knowledge, we also make use of this 555 quiz to review previous discussion. So kung gusto mo talagang balikan yung mga questions na common mistake ng mga bata, this activity is really perfect. Okay? Para mabalikan natin yung common mistakes, i-present uli natin yung items na yon. Kapag nag-elicit pa din yung common mistake, then tsaka natin ngayon gawin siyang motivation para maging springboard natin siya for our discussion. Balikan natin yung common mistakes. I-discuss natin sa loob ng classroom yung common mistakes. Because again, we don't want that common mistakes that our students will be bringing those common mistakes when they go to higher math. Okay, or, or the more complex math subjects. Next will be worksheets. Okay, so Vibal Publishing House is really advertising this one and really trying to invest to, to have this one very um, promoted to our teachers because they are offering worksheets for, for our students, especially in the subject math. Kailangan ng mga sudyante natin ng practice exercises. So we, we look at this one. We, we try to see what, what are applicable for our kids. For kinder to grade six, we make sure that we provide them supplementary activities. Okay? Huwag lang tayong makontento sa mga activities na nasa libro. Alam natin na kukulangin yun pagdating ng araw. So we provide them supplementary activities. So this worksheet is a learn-at-home kits of Bibop Publishing House. We try to look at this one and we share this to our colleagues. If we think this can materialize on our setup, okay? So our setup right now is for the online learning class or on, um, 
homeschooling or I don't know how you call that one, but here we call it virtual classes. So for virtual classes, I think this one is very important so that we can just send the worksheets to our students and ask them to, to send it back to us para ma-checkan ma, ma natin or ma-grade natin at magkaroon ng practice exercises si mga bata. Okay? And last, for the best practices that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to be showing to you, this is very familiar to everyone. Kahoot is really very interactive activity and I am really um, one of the fans of this game or this website. So I would encourage you also to explore Kahoot. Create a quiz game with Kahoot will be interactive. Sobrang engaging itong activity nito sa mga bata. So take a look at this one. If you're not familiar yet with Kahoot, you can visit the one, this one online and try to see if what will be the best thing that you can do in your classroom with the application of Kahoot. But right now, what I'm going to share with you is this website. The website is thatquiz.org. Let me share that one right now. So I have it right here. So this is thatquiz.org. So type nyo lang thatquiz.org. At maraming concepts dito ng math na kung saan pwede nating ma, ma, maging practice exercises sa mga bata. So ang topic natin ngayon ay arithmetic. So I'll be clicking on arithmetic. So when I click on arithmetic, bibigyan ako nito ng mga options. If I want the length of the activity to be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 50 minutes, or an open time, it's up to you as a teacher. Or if you want them to answer questions that are level 10, level 15, level 100, so pwede natin i-navigate itong mga to. Or kung gusto mo ng timer, or gusto mo ng feedback for that one, or also... You can make use of this one if you want to focus on addition. Bibigyan kanya ng mga questions about addition. Like for example, I answered this one. I answered this one as 13. Bibigyan kanya kagad ng panibagong um, item na pwede maging drill ng bata para makita natin and it would automatically give them the results of this one. Okay? So if you want to, to have mix and match of addition and subtraction, so pwede namang ito ay addition. So sabi natin ito ay 11. Then the next one is subtraction. We can say that we are practicing two operations at the same time. Or if you want to combine four operations, this one, for example, or this one, subtraction naman, or this one, or this one is division. So maraming mga interactive or mga options dito na pwede mong gawin. You can also have um, practice exercises that are inverted. Or inverted like this one, they fill in the blank. So blank plus 10 is equal to 16. Or you can have it in long A. When you say long A is the long process of dividing. So this is by 1. And this is by 2. So that will be practice exercises for your students. And for long B, we can have this one for subtraction or triplet. We can have the mix and match of the, the operations in terms of mathematics. Again, this is not just only limited for, for arithmetic. So kung makikita nyo dito, if you are teaching inequality, if you're teaching um, about measurement, if you're teaching about triangles, if you're teaching about the number line, calculus is also here, probability, and even numbers place value for the basic math exponents. So itong website na to ay isang malaking tool para sa ating mga teachers. You can create your account, okay? Teachers can create their own account and formulate your own questions if you want, but this program would automatically give you random questions regarding specific topic about integers, fractions, or geometry. But if you want your questions to be posted on this .quiz.org, you can create your own question and share the URL or the link to your students. So once they, are, they open the link that you shared to them, they'll be able to see the questions that you formulated, okay? So again, this, this um, website is .quiz.org, okay? So balik tayo dito sa ating presentation. Okay, one moment, where is my presentation? Where's that one? Okay, all right, let me stop, stop my sharing first. Okay, can't see my presentation right now. One moment, what was that? 
All right. Can you still? I think so. Okay. I think you can still share my see my screen right now. All right. Okay. So balik tayo dito. So for the online website, we have Kahoot and we have thatquiz.org. And I'm sharing this one because I think this is very good practice that I'm doing as a teacher in middle school. And I'll be able to make sure that my kids are really doing practice exercises. And it, this would really be very helpful kasi nakikita kagad nila yung mistake. Kung magkamali man sila, malalaman kagad nila yung tamang sagot at malakita nila kung saan sila nagkamali. Okay? So again, the best practices would be number one would be drills or exit ticket, flashcards, 555 quiz, worksheets, and online websites, the Kahoot and um, .quiz.org, and even the worksheets offered by Viva Publishing House. So before I end this presentation, I'd like you to take a look at this um, saying that I got this from the same references from the seven steps in um, enhancing calculations for math. So it says there that mathematics is not, is not just um, solving for X. It's also figuring Y. Because please take note, we always ask our students, what's the rule again? We always ask our students, what's the formula? But after all, it's not just about what's the rule and what's the formula because math can be very, very complex. Kung alam nilang gamitin ang four basic operations, kahit hindi nila matandaan ang rule ng exponents, kung alam nilang mag 2 raised to 2, at alam nila na kapag minultiply nila ang 2 raised to 2 sa so 2 raised to 3, ang magiging sagot ay 2 raised to 5 because they know that they are just multiplying. So always remember that solutions can be different. Okay, one moment. That solutions can be different. I don't know what's going on. Uh, let me show it that way. Okay, that solutions can be different, but please take note that correct process and answer should be accepted. Okay, so habang... Nakikita natin nag improve yung mga bata sa basic calculations. Nagpa-formulate sila ng sarili nilang mga shortcuts. At itong mga shortcuts na to ay dapat maintindihan natin na it makes sense after all. Na meron naman talagang point yung bata in terms of the process, how he did that activity in math or how he answered that particular question. It can be a different process but we are not saying to our students, ay mali yan. So maraming ways para mag-come up ng tamang sagot and we want our students to show their solutions at all times because we want them to, to express their ideas for them to show their solution. And they might have a better solution than ours, which possible as a teacher, possible na mas maganda yung solution na binigay ng sujante. So natitrain natin yung bata in terms of that one that we're, we're asking them to show their solution. We're making sure that their basic calculations are correct and they made use of the proper operation respected to that problem solving, okay? So please take note that math is not just about solving for X, but it's also figuring Y. What's the reason behind that? Because we want everyone to be more literate in terms of math. At babalik tayo sa idea na ang math ay pumapalibot lamang or umiikot sa four basic operations. Huwag natin kakalimutan yun. We ask them to practice how to add, multiply, subtract or divide, ito yung pinakasusi nila para mas ma matutunan nila yung mga mas matataas na concept sa math. Kasi kapag maganda ang foundation nila sa math, kahit sobrang hirap pa niyang uh, problem solving na yan, kung lahat ng mga terms ay patungkol sa four basic operations na yon, alam at alam nila ang mga gagawin nilang proseso. So tulungan natin yung mga bata na maging literate sa math those seven steps or best practices na na-share ko sa inyo, sana mag-materialize at sana may natutunan kayo at may apply niyo sa inyong mga classroom setups. Again, uh, maraming salamat sa inyong oras at sa inyong pakikinig. Uh, hope to see you again for the next webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Now we will proceed to the question and answer portion. Our first question po is from Ms. Wendy Kizon. Sir, can you suggest easy exercises para po ma-practice ang arithmetic skills? Okay. Um, kanina meron akong shinare na website, um, .quiz.org. Um, pwede mong i-adjust doon yung level of difficulty ng 
practice exercises na bibigyan natin sa mga bata. So, pwede sila mag-start sa level 1. Um, I don't know if I can still share my screen, but let me try. Um, this .quiz.org is, I would really recommend for, for everyone. And you can change the level of difficulty. You can start from level 2, na kung saan, mababang numbers yung kanilang may encounter. But if you want to start or to have level 100, you can have a difficult types of questions na pwede ma-practice ng bata. So itong .quiz.org would really recommend to you guys and even yung mga worksheets na pwede nating makuha online. We, we check their prior knowledge. Ano na ba yung alam ng mga bata? Kasi baka naman kakabigay natin ng mga easy questions na bobor na yung mga sudyante natin or yung mga, yung, yeah, yung mga sudyante natin. Hindi na natin alam na kailangan na natin mag-jump into the next level of yung difficulty or yung level of difficulty. So I would really suggest for you to look for worksheets and to look for um, this kind of website na kung saan pwede natin i-adjust yung level of difficulty ng mga questions na pwede natin maibigay sa mga bata. Okay, but before we we provide them the worksheets of the practice exercises, we always look into their prior knowledge. Okay, we we are just like doctors that we are trying to get cure for for a certain um, virus or for a certain problem or for a certain disease. But before we cure that specific problem or disease, we always ask for um, the very basic. We troubleshoot. Ano yung nangyari? Anong kinain? Anong ininom? Um, um, ilang oras na tulog? So, tinatroubleshoot ng mga doktor yung bago nila bigyan ng reseta. So, ganoon din tayo mga teachers. I-troubleshoot muna natin. Ano na ba yung alam ng bata? Marunong na ba siyang mag-add? Marunong na ba siyang mag-multiply? Kaya na ba niya ng mga one-digit number or two-digit number, two digit numbers? So, from there, makikita natin, din na-diagnose natin or in-identify na nila yung prior knowledge ng mga bata. Para sa gayon, may provide natin yung akmang um, level ng worksheets or practice exercises. So this one is really recommended for you. Worksheets from uh, from publishing house like in Vival. We would we would like to look at it and make sure that we we check alin doon yung appropriate for our students. So I hope I answered your question. Thank you so much, sir. We'll proceed to the second question from Miss Lean Gabs Sombero. Good morning po. As a kindergarten teacher, how can I address the problem issue about the division problem, uh, problem solving? What strategies to be used po? Salamat. Okay. Um, that's very good question or very tough question. I'm wondering for kinder, we are already teaching division. So if you think, if you think your kids are not um, literate enough in terms of division, Balikan muna natin yung concepts nila ng multiplication. Okay, so I, I, I'm not saying that there is no best uh, practice or activities for division. But before we jump into division, we go back to the concepts of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Because if I'm not mistaken, before you jump into division as the topic for the basic operation of arithmetic, balikan natin yung idea, marunong na ba sila mag-multiply? Okay before natin ma-troubleshoot yung kung paano at anong problem-solving um, questions or best practices ang may suggest natin or may apply natin sa loob ng classroom in terms of kindergarten. So if that's kindergarten, they're doing division already. I mean, that's wow. I mean, that's a good um, I mean foundation for kids because at the very age of kinder, I mean, very age a very young age, alam na nila mag-divide, pero kung nahihirapan pa sila as a kindergarten teacher, balikan natin yung basic ng tatlong natitirang operations or yung tatlong dapat maunang operation, okay? Bago tayo mag-jump into division. Because if you can can assure that they have a good foundation of the three basic operations, math, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, before you jump into division, mas... Ma, ano natin, mas malalaro natin yung mga practice exercises or yung mga problem solving na pwede natin maibigay sa mga bata. So, i, ano natin, i-mix and match natin. Bago natin sila i-expose sa division, balikan natin yung prior knowledge nila ng three basic operations para ma-materialize natin yun. Tapos, i-akma natin na merong problem solving na for add, the first sentence is for them to add, then the next sentence will be for them to divide. 
So makikita natin doon na alam nila mag-add tapos sa bandang dulo, tinatarget din natin yung kung ano yung competencies na gusto nating ma-target for that day, which is the division. So again, i-incorporate natin yung operations ng addition, subtraction, multiplication, tapos tsaka natin ngayon i-troubleshoot yung division. Okay? So right now, I'm, I'm really sorry if hindi ako nakapagbigay ng, ng activities or ng websites, but again, I would like to, to, to stand on the idea that we check their prior knowledge. So kung kaya natin i-insert yung other basic operations bago tayo mag-division, dun muna tayo mag-strengthen mag, mag, mag natin yun. That's why this topic is about strengthening arithmetic. So balikan natin yung hindi nila alam. Thank you for that question. Thank you, sir. Last question po is from Ms. Marjorie Beltran. Hi, sir. What if the students know how to do math, but they just don't understand what the question is asking? Right. Um, if that's the problem right now, we're, we're talking about not arithmetic, but we're talking about the language of math. That's another concept na dapat matutunan ng bata. Kaka-practice natin ng kaka-practice ng add, subtract, multiply, divide. Papalo natin ngayon matatroubleshoot yung language ng math. So kaka-practice ng bata sa paggamit ng four basic operations, we are also exposing them to different language of math. Kagaya kanina ng pinresent ko dito, dapat ma-expose natin sila sa mga terms na kung saan ito ay patungkol din naman pala sa addition. Kagaya ng word na total, kagaya ng word na increase, ito ay patungkol sa operation ng addition kasi marunong sila mag-add. Ang problema lang ng magiging problema lang siguro ng bata ay hindi nila naintindihan yung language ng math. And math language is is in English. Ang language ng ginagamit natin sa math ay English. So, i-expose natin sila sa mga terminologies na to na nakikita natin sa screen natin ngayon. At itong four basic operations na to ay hindi lamang gagamit ng salitang add, hindi nga lang sa gagamit ng salitang subtract, hindi nga lang gagamit ng salitang multiplication or multiply or even divide. So, maraming mga terms sa math na dapat ma-expose natin yung bata. So, instead na sabihin natin 1 plus 1, sabihin natin 1 increased by 1. Or pag sinabi natin nagsusubtract tayo, 5 take away uh, 2 take away from 5 so or 2 take from 5 so yung ganung yung mga terms na pwede nating ma-incorporate yung different language ng math na kung saan ine-expose natin sila because we know they know how to add they know how to subtract pero nasanay sila sa limited na terminologies na ginagamit natin sa loob ng classroom so as a teacher we we make use of all the terms that are synonyms to the four basic operations like for multiplication, when we say doubled, alam ba ng bata yung term na doubled ay nagmumultiply sila? Alam ba ng bata na kapag sinabi natin we group our, sa problem solving, madalas ginagamit eh, group of seven. So from 49 kids, we want them to group to seven. How many per group? So ganun yung mga problem solving. So we expose them kasi walang term na division doon sa problem na yun or sa statement na yun. Ang term na ginamit doon ay we group them. So when you use or when they hear the word group, dapat na-associate nila yung, um, yung operation na division. So meron tayong familiarity of words and we have lots of words that are used in math and that's the language of math and we make our students familiar to the language of math. Okay? So we, we, we don't limit terms used in math as add, subtract, multiply, divide or difference, um, quotient, and product we also use other terms that would pertain to the same operation. So, lawakan natin yung vocabulary ng mga bata. So, as a teacher, siguro lawakan din natin yung vocabulary natin kung ano pa yung mga other synonyms na patungkol dun sa operation na yun kapag pinag-uusapan natin ng arithmetic. Para sa gayon, ma-share natin sa mga bata na may arithmetic na ang patungkol ay addition, pareho pa din ang lalabas dun na konsepto. Okay? So, makikita natin doon na i-expose natin yung mga bata sa ganong klaseng situation. That's all the questions we have for now, sir. Any last reminders to our viewers, Paul? Um, wala namang last reminders. Ingat lang tayo palagi and we make sure that we, um, we take care of ourselves in terms of this pandemic. And for our teachers na magsisimula pa lang ang school year natin for this coming October, I think, um, we prepare, we have enough time. I encourage you to, to do preparations a lot because 
again, I, I also believe as a teacher that nothing beats preparation. So we prepare and we make sure that we are ready because our students are really excited going back to school. Okay. And I will also like to say um, greetings to my family in the Philippines, to my nanay and tatay and to my brother and sister and their families, and also to my friends and my colleagues and to my mentors in the Philippines. Thank you so much. There we have it. On behalf of Ibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank you, Sir King, for being our speaker for today for this insightful and co comprehensive learning session with us. It is truly an honor to have you with us today, Sir. And to all our Kabibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. We do encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vibal Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli maraming salamat at magandang araw sa atin lahat. Happy weekend, everyone. See you again on Monday. Thank you so much. Happy weekend.